Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here on a rainy day at Harvard with Danielle Jacob, a professor of atmospheric sciences who's going to talk to us about warming in the Arctic. You were just up there and uh, you saw some evidence for why the Arctic ice is melting and what's going on out there. What causes all this? Well, this we don't really know and we're <laughs> trying to understand. The Arctic is a place on Earth that has been warming the most over the past century and uh, the rate of change has accelerated over the past decades and it's not something that we can predict with our climate models. We're very concerned about this because as the Arctic sea ice melts, as the polar cap melts, you have what you, you set up what, you, what we call a climatic feedback mm. in which less solar radiation is reflected out to space and so you increase the amount of warming. So we're trying very hard to understand why the Arctic is warming so rapidly and what is it that is missing from our understanding. So you're basically saying that ice is shiny and water isn't as shiny? So. Well, that's right. Water is pretty dark. If you look at it from space, see the water is dark, snow is bright, and so the snow will reflect solar radiation out to space, preventing it from warming the Earth. If you convert the Arctic to a liquid ocean, then it will be pretty dark and you will have a lot more heating. And I, I mean, I know the difference definitely between getting into a white car or getting into a black car in the sun. We're talking about the same kind of thing. If it's dark, then it, the world's going to get hotter faster. Yeah, this is exactly. Let, let me show, give you a little demonstration sure. of this. Imagine that this is the Arctic. So we've got some salt here. We've got some salt here. Okay. So we have some salt packets because here we are in the Harvard Law School cafeteria. <laughs> and so we have handy a, bit, a little bit of salt with which we can simulate the Arctic polar cap. Now imagine that you make this polar cap a little darker. It doesn't have to really melt, but imagine some process. You add some, you add some pepper here to the ice cap. You can see right away that it, it is becoming gray instead of white. And as a result, it will absorb more of the sunlight. So it gets darker here by adding something. It would also yeah. get darker by melting, but we're adding stuff too, right? Yes, and this is what we were really interested in in going to the Arctic, is trying to understand whether particles of soot transported from uh, the northern mid-latitude continents and increasingly from China could deposit to the Arctic ice sheet and therefore increase the melting rate. So when we burn stuff, whether it's in a power plant or even in your backyard, that soot can end up on the ice and it can make everything That's warmer. That's right. It can, soot can travel thousands of miles. It can easily travel all the way from, you know, the, the exhaust of a diesel truck all the way to the, to the Arctic. And one thing that we found that was very interesting when we went to the Arctic is that there was a lot of, of that soot uh, present all over the ice sheet. And, but a lot of this was actually coming from fires, mm. from open fires um, in Siberia and also in the central part of like, Russia. Like a cooking fire that somebody set no, no, or, or a open, forest fire? Forest fires, open fires. Um, and partly this is associated with the lumbering industry mm. that's doing some clearing of a brush and partly it's associated with agricultural waste burning. But that activity seems to have increased uh, over the past few decades, in part because of the warming, you see, because as the earth gets warmer, as Siberia gets warmer, then you can start burning the forest uh, earlier. And as a result, you get more of this soot coming over to the Arctic, precipitating on the ice, warming the, 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 the Arctic, melting the ice, and you have kind of this precipitous feedback. So it's actually easier to get to those cold places because they're a little warmer and that makes people do more of these bad activities in the cold places that makes those cold places even warmer and continues the cycle and we end up with exactly. maybe no ice at some point in the Arctic? Oh yes, we're very concerned that at the current rate uh, we could have an ice-free Arctic in the summer uh, within 10, 20 years. Oh wow. So yeah. Is there anything that can be done about this that we know about or anything that we should think about to, to prevent this from happening as fast as it is? Yes, uh, the, those soot particles that are so problematic in terms of the Arctic warming come from incomplete combustion. Mm -hmm. That is, when you burn material without being too careful, you emit a lot of soot. For example, your backyard barbecue will emit a lot of soot particles. Whenever you actually see smoke, you're, yeah, you're not doing it right, Yeah, when you see right, black right? smoke. When you see black smoke, you know you're not doing the burning right, okay. And so uh, this is something that's pretty simple to control, actually from combustion sources. Um, and in fact, those soot particles are very bad for health. And so by trying to remove those soot particles from combustion processes, you may help not only climate, but you may also help public health. 
Um, and in the context of these uh, open fires that we've been seeing in Siberia that, con that, that concern us, this is basically a matter of policy. Mm -hmm. That is, the Russian government could step in and control those fires or at least control the way that they're happening so that you don't get as much of those soot particles transported to the Arctic. So cleaner burning power plants and trucks and those kind of things and just don't burn as much stuff outside. That's right. So uh, in, in the United States, we just have, have had a new rule from the Environmental Protection Agency to ban uh, soot from diesel trucks. Mm. So, um, so you know, when, when, you, when you go outside on the street, you often see some black smoke spewed out by diesel engines, buses or trucks. Well, you know, in a few years, there'll be much less of that in the United States, thanks oh. to new regulations that are directed at public health, but that will also help to uh, mitigate the climate change in the Arctic. Well, that's good. It sounds like it's good for us and it's good for this. So thank you very much for telling us about what you, uh, what you do and showing us your salt and pepper demo. <laughs> thank you.